I'm on it, on it, I'm, I'm on it, on yeah. it, I'm, I'm on, on the street boy beats. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. on it, on it, man, I told y'all niggas y'all ain't ready, man, it, we it, can't I'm, be stopped. I'm on the strip. It's the Raw Way Show Podcast, and we back cracking lagging with my boy, Paul Clark. Ding. What, what? What up, what up? If y'all don't know, now you know, or you should fucking ask somebody. Mm-hmm. In the building with us right now, one of the greats on a living legend, nigga been on top of his game. I'm saying, because I go back with him a long time, and he was already doing shit before that. So motherfucker been on top of their game, I could say more than 20 years. Yeah. And the nigga's still going, still growing, still creating new shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's innovative and inspiring. It should be the same for each and everybody that comes in contact or even just know that a motherfucker putting in work. He's creating work ethic. The bar is high. Mm -hmm. Ones and twos. Hey. And I'm we about to holler at this motherfucker, man, because he just put me on something. I forgot something and he just made me remember some shit. But if you don't know him, like I know him, you don't know him like I know him, but give it up for my nigga. Dommy Styles. DJ Dommy, huge deal. <laughs> style. Yeah. Yeah, what up, though? What's happening? What's happening? What's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, man? Oh, oh, my yes, God. Sir. Oh, man. Yeah, appreciate y'all having me up on the show. What's happening, though? Ah, yeah, it's been too long. It's been way too long. long. We've been, we been waiting on it, man. Like, ah, yeah. uh, my nigga. You know I love y'all. Respect respect. Hey, no, 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 no. Y'all have no fucking idea. <laughs> I'ma just say Shark Bar. Woo! Shark Bar. I'ma just take bar, that there. Yeah, I ain't gonna yeah, talk go. about shit else. Just the Shark Bar, my nigga. The obvious, you know. He goes those little different things, the man. Obvious, man. Man, man running What's the streets, up with you, man. Man, hey, just doing a thing, man. Up and down these streets, man. The road. Making, making, making everybody else better, man. Do what I do, like, like we always do, man. Scoot into that mic for me. Oh, I got scoot into my phone. I got you. Ready? So, yeah. what you spinning right now? Man, right. What you, when you, when you, what you spinning right now? Right now, when I'm roll, if I'm riding on a trip. Right now, honestly, I in take the club my, or on the club. You know what? To be honest, I'll, I'll be a complete. Uh, asshole about this and when I'm in the club I just zone out and don't even pay attention to the music right now. Really? Yeah. So, so you just, because I, I was going to ask you, that's a question later yeah. that, that asks like what makes you, like do you like when you in the club spinning? Mm -hmm. Do you like just do what make you feel good or just do you got a routine or anything? Nah, you know, I, I can't uh, I can't do the routine thing. I can't do it because then it seems like it's a job. Mm. It's always gonna be something different. I mean, it's more of a. I'm always a feeling person. That's so like, I'm all, you know, I'm always DJ by with the vibe. So, um, but I'm also Uncle Ratchet though. I love Ratchet music. It's just me. <laughs> I've always been the person. <laughs> yeah, 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 all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's like that. I've always been the guy who loved that energy, that type of let's get up and dance. I don't give a no. I don't care. Let's go rock. Let's rock. I'm gonna rock. 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 Yeah. rock it. But me telling you. My favorite artist is something that I rock. Like, uh, shoot, I really can't. I can't tell you because it all sounds the same. Not, not right now. Yeah, yeah. Right now, it's like when they say rap music is down forty percent. It's down forty percent because ain't nothing innovative. Where I'm like, man, I, I really want. I really want to hear this. You know, uh, the butcher's new stuff is dope. But then, you know, I'm old school cat. When I hear, when I hear the butcher. I you know I hear Beanie. I'm like, all right. I'm like, cool. All right, you know it's gonna be Beanie, but Jesus' album is, you know, is, you know, has everybody heard Jesus' new double album? I haven't heard none of it yet. It's it's cool, but it's you know it's just like when you heard some of Jay's new stuff or some of Nas' new stuff. It ain't just you know. I'm gonna tell you, Nas' though, not, not the same person. It's rat, se it's rat season. Like yeah. you know, this yeah. is what it is. Like yeah. I said this before. Like when Lauryn Hill came out and, and Moni Love and all that, right there. You know, what I'm saying women love that music. Rats was there. They had to adapt to that music. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying. So now this is the year. This is the season. For the rap music, all this shit, all these rats out here, you know, you been sucking dick behind. Pull that mic to you, Paul. You been sucking dick, you know what I'm saying, behind the paper store on Barson's Avenue and shit. You know what I'm saying? Now they got music talking about it. You sucking dick. Yeah, so you jump on it and shit. <laughs> it's, so now women is like, 
this ain't real music no more. Men is like, this ain't real music. But the rats, it's more rats in there are real it's women. It's vibing in yeah. that bitch. The rats, you done, you done took over the women. You know, the now the women, y'all gotta sit there and listen to this rat music. Just like right. how the rats had to listen to Lauryn Hill and shit. The public choosing this motherfucking music. All them views you get in Europe. You a nothing ass rapper. Like, no lie. My daughter, Cy, you know, Dad, I don't never hear you bumping my, and you don't even know the words to my song. Cy spit. Yeah, she Didn't does. Didn't you tell us that? Yeah, yeah, I showed oh, you. Oh, see your shit. Uh, yeah. Size nine. She probably know the song right there. I, I'm not going to. And I'm busting on your forehead. No, I'm not doing oh, that. Hold on. Oh, yeah. hold on. Oh, it's twerk music. Oh, hey, it's twerk music. It's, it's, it's twerk music right there. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not supposed to know the words. And I, that's my daughter right there. I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> I don't even want to hear it. Now. <laughs> I was my niece, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> she was showing me the text with EK40 want to get on that song, and she's like, you know, what, what should I charge dad you know what I'm saying and I'm like 20k he just wanna fuck it <laughs> <laughs> was crazy but it didn't come up a mouth it didn't come up a mouth yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it didn't come up a mouth you should have told him like the cake would have paid it yeah get that cake Tell her. You should have told her. High, start high and take out the There's a lot of motherfuckers out there that look like they got money and they ain't got shit. You just negotiate. You start high and then negotiate. Yeah, 20k for that verse. But yo, you had to say that out loud <laughs> with the name attached. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so you fuck, you know, so you fuck with. Well, I think we all fuck with the um, ratchet shit in a way of speaking. Even if we don't, and we yeah. say we don't, we all fuck with it because it's just what society is giving us. Yeah, but it's the energy too, though, man. You know, when it's authenticity. When somebody's authentic in what they say and they do, with us being who we are, you know, I, you know, I'm about real stuff. If you phony. I can smell you. You know, we've been in those green rooms right. where somebody, you know, it was a, a comedian or it was a rapper, it was a DJ, and you're like, hold on, the person you portray on that stage ain't the same person. That right talking, yeah, yeah, you talking, yeah, you talking all this mess. Like how Will Smith did Joe at the rink. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Pull that mic in. <laughs> so yeah, them at the break. Hey, what yeah. happened? The hat is that. Yeah. yeah, so so you know when, when it's authentic, you can feel that energy. Like I said, it's all energy thing. So you know if they out here want to, they want to be, you know they want to be hoes. They want to be what they want to be. That's cool. That's you. I'm I'm not tripping. But I'm also I'm not gonna have my kids in the back listening to it either because I'll be I'm you know it's, it's just me. But I can also feel that energy where. It's gonna take them there. And when it's as a DJ, you know, it's a high record. They're gonna it's sent to you anyway. Like, you play this. This, yeah. like, this is worth playing. I never, yeah. I never looked at it like that. You know, what I'm saying I was telling some people in the barbershop right now that uh, California with Tupac and them and shit right mm -hmm. here. I see that on a motherfucking car commercial. They would never put yeah. that shit there in the '90s and shit. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? This is motivation music. I don't care what it is. You can play yeah. some of this rat ass music and shit before a football game, and all the kids is in there. You know, what I'm saying bopping that. They don't so, care if it's talking about killer and bop. Oh, oh, oh. They don't care about it. it's that energy. That's car chase music and shit. I'm so it might listening. be the music. It's just the tone in it. We're not gonna take this. You know what I'm saying? Like you talking about oh, don't don't it. We yeah. just like the vibe of it. We ain't even fuck about the fucking words. We don't like care about the words no more. Yeah, it's the vibe. It's the vibe. Like it's the vibe. Like the mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's definitely it's the vibe. I never like with the um, from a DJ point of view. Mm -hmm. That was like why um, to hear you say that. That's dope because. We are always closed minded to music being from hip hop niggas that been in it for so long, right. like because it's big, it's 50 years old today, and a lot of us was a, born into it, and we've been a part of the 50 years, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, it's like, it. yeah, but I'm saying, as far as the morals and what, what we was told hip hop was supposed to be, what we was told hip hop should be, the rapper, the MC. You know, when it's like the rapper and the MC is two different people. Or, the, you know, like all the rules and the, and the shit about hip hop. And now it's like that shit is like as it evolves. Because remember, keeping it real and all that shit, nigga, you a sellout. But we were always trying to be mainstream. Right. You know, that was the whole thing to be able to do what you do and be mainstream. So now this is the realest, realest version of all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because. If a motherfucker being ratchet, that's who they are. That's just how they get down. And society is accepting it. You know, it's bad, it's good. It's a lot of shit in the circle. But for our hip hop go, like you said, real recognized, real. The motherfucker mm -hmm. doing what, what, what was real 100 for them, and they getting heard and sold and selling. 
you really can't knock the hustle. Right. Cause that shit is real shit. It's real shit. Because I'm gonna tell you this right here. I, you know what I'm saying? I like disagree with a whole bunch of stuff you said. Like, you know what I'm saying? Rap when it was starting out, you know what I'm saying, and rap today. Rap back here wasn't doing nothing but telling you what I see when I walk outside. Mm -hmm. That was it. Roaches in the back, rats in the you know what I'm saying? That, this is what it is. Right. Junkies everywhere, people pissing on the stick. You know what I'm saying? That's what they see. We, this is what we seeing today. You know what I'm yeah. saying? In the 90s, we seen police pulling people over, beating the fuck out of you, you know what I'm saying? Everybody selling crack and all that shit. That's so right. that's that's what you see, so that's what you rap about. So as time evolved, you know what I'm saying, that whatever the fuck society, you know saying, changes into, that's what rap is. So you think as time, as you say, about. time evolved, right? And then you don't have to be real. You know what I'm saying, like I said right there, NWA, you started gangster rap basically, it was only easy and ran. It was only gangsters. You didn't even smoke weed, Dre, so like, why? You know what I'm saying, I'm gonna give the people what they want to hear. Nigga, I, I got, got a fun fact, I got a fun yeah, fact for y'all niggas. I don't know, Dami might know. Playboy might. I don't know. Fun fact: Fat Five Freddy was on um, Angela Yee's. Ain't no name Angela Yee. Mm -hmm. yeah. Her show. I was talking, and he said Ice Cube wrote a whole. Um, what's old girl name that was on um, Ruthless? The three girls. Oh, JJ Fab. JJ Fab. He wrote yeah. the whole album. Mm -hmm. He wrote the whole fucking album. I didn't know that. Yeah. Never fucking knew that. So that means he got more. So the lemon, 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 all that shit. He wrote all that shit. And I bet you that was a mistake. She can't remember the rap, and she just did that on private. Mm -hmm. Fuck with Jerry. Hey, you know what? Keep that shit right there. Yeah, that's how it happened a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. but that was dope. I didn't know that. So big shout out to Ice Cube for his writer writing shit. Yeah, Cube was a monster. Yeah. So you ain't never fucking Franklin Park. No parks, nothing. Huh? You never fucking Franklin Park. Fucking Franklin Park? Yeah. No. Nowhere. No parks outside. Yeah, no I was about to go to a park, but it wasn't Franklin. I'm saying yeah. like it's We had more senses back then, so motherfuckers really couldn't rap about that, especially no chick. You know, ain't no gloves on right now. Ain't no gloves I on. used to rap about that shit about so Now it's though. popular to say, you know what I'm saying, you got fucked on the hood of the car. I used to rap about that. But you like, like, word it's your word. Your wordplay was important in our, you know in our younger days. Not really. It was. I mean, yeah. not, but it was but, more subliminal. Yeah. You know, it was more subliminal than yeah. I did now. Yeah. That's yeah. a genre yeah. rap. Yeah. Because yeah. MC yeah. Hammer, yeah. MC yeah. Hammer, so new. You didn't know. He didn't have no verbals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, young MC, I hated his guts. Why? Because he had no verbals. Simplistic. Yeah, yeah. simplistic. Simple. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that was just his style. Yeah, he's still living off that one song, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like uh, Coke Funky. But he wrote, um, he, he wrote Funky Comedy yeah. and all that shit. I too. didn't like that song. As soon as I found out he wrote that shit, I said, now I don't like that song. <laughs> and I don't like Tone Loke either. Now, <laughs> since your father. <laughs> so, Dom. Yes, sir. What, what made you start DJing? Who, what, what, what was the whole shit that got you into DJing? Shoot, so, um, it was out. Where were we at? Long story short, we were uh, trying to get chicks, and we were like, "That's Look. the most honest shit yeah, I ever so heard." Being was, doing this was, shit, we do. Yeah, so you know, in the nineties, it was we were the only what, what's the only club we had? It was on it was on Fifth, and it was not it wasn't headliners, it wasn't two shades, it was flyers. Uh, not flyers, no. It was a, it was a teenage club that always got. Uh -huh. shot every night. Teen Sing? It was Teen Sing. It was Teen Sing. Uh, the upstairs and downstairs shit. Uh, yeah, upstairs and downstairs shit. Right there at 5th and Rary. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you used to go there and, yeah. man, try it. And, 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 <laughs> try to get out safely. You know, everybody knows. Because oh, Teen Sing used to slap. You from Columbus. And you rode 50 deep, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all rode deep. But like, everybody in there. Yeah, but everybody from east side of town was from there. We could been, and it was right there, smack dab there in the middle. Yeah. So, we just got tired of coming out and dodging bullets and fighting. So we were like, look, let's go party. Like, yeah. Listen, you know what, though? <laughs> the story you tell it uh -huh. is the same story as some shit that just happened yesterday. God damn it, like, the motherfucker, we, we so fucked up, like, uh, where we looking at this shit all fucked up, like out was happening, but it, it was already happening. This yeah, shit, yeah, it was crazy. He's been getting shot yeah. and, and beat up and the the pop forever. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember it was like, man, we got to throw a party. So my homeboy Juwan was like, hey, I'll talk to my parents. His parents were like, all right, y'all gonna do the basement. So we were like, oh, shoot, we gonna get the, so we got the red light. Yeah, the red, red light. light here down there. So, and I had a, I had a whole bunch of music. I always had music. So I was down there with two tape players like this, thinking of tape players and stuff. So everybody, I'm gonna do the party. 
So I'm like, all right, cool. And I was already rapping because I started off as an MC. Right. So I always doing that stuff. So I was always that guy when it came to that stuff. So we down there every party and then it just took off from there. And I was like, can you do this party? Wow, that was dope. Can you do this? And I had, you know, I was working at, uh, I, think I, was, I was like 12 or 13. But I was working at um, the flea market mm. in Northern Lights. I was about to say which one. Yeah, in Northern Lights it was out there. So I was working, I forget the African guy's name, but he was a bootlegger. So I had all the bootleg tapes. So I was grabbing everything else. So I was selling tapes, African garb. I was with everything you else. You some shit of his, y'all just took through shit? No, nah, I really, he was like, man, it's 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 anything, you know, because it was like, what, 10 cent of tape to him? So I didn't know. He was like, man, let's go take as many tapes as you want to do a good job. Just yeah. up to everybody. <laughs> So you know, I was some fake MCM shit, all the type, all the type of stuff he had. So we would have the parties that came from there, and then you know we was rapping, and you know that's where Mega Hurts and everything else came from, and it just bubbled. Mega and yeah, I didn't, and I didn't take none of that shit seriously until I got to college, and uh, one of my professors was like, "Hey, you know, this is a business." I'm like, "This ain't no business. Nothing's out here." So when you get a, when you get your first timetable, my first timetable, shoot a little bit after that, my parents was like, "Man, this is keeping them." Straight and narrow. Let's try and get him a turntable. So, uh, mm. well, I think it was in the back of the source. It might have been in the back of the source. <laughs> where you, you know, where you can grab it. You, you got the coffin. You got the coffin. <laughs> got, got the little set. I hustled up. The money, got the little set and everything else. And my parents, all right, we matched. They matched. I think they matched. My parents matched me half. And all right, cool. So I was out. There, I was in school selling candy and condoms and all types of stuff. Just trying to get That's this. Dope. So, Cause I was the only one who wasn't scared to go up to the uh, thing at CVS with Asma Condoms. Yeah, you know back then people were scared of Asma Condoms. I'm like, can I get some condoms? They're like, can you get more condoms? Like, yeah, they just condoms. So I was doing he all that. Condoms. condoms. Yeah. <laughs> so should have been hanging with your men. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so we, uh, you know, I got that and got out the back, and then I'm working the turn from there. Yeah. And then and then I got the mixer. I didn't go to I didn't go to radio show like everybody else. It's another uh, uh, Columbus staple. Y'all remember Stravaganza? Mm-hmm. The Stravaganza had all these equipment. So I'm like, man, I hustled up like a hundred bucks and got this big long ass. The mixer had to be like three feet long. This <laughs> shit <laughs> had sound effects on it. That's why I got it because it had sound effects. It's fake ass uh, Uzi sound effect, the bomb effect. It was all like some eight bit stuff. Yeah. But I had it. I'm like, are we gonna turn this next party up? So when that was made, and then I got more serious when we were uh, with the whole crew, opening prizes, Mega Hertz, all of us was doing the stuff, and we were doing the um, the talent shows. So we would go, you know, from East Rec Center doing the talent shows, schools doing that, and we didn't have a DJ because I really wasn't DJ until I was still rapping. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm like, man, hold on, I want to get the real equipment so we ain't got to pay a DJ so we can look official. Right. But I was always worried about the look and the brand. So then I got that, and then, you know, I just had it. And like I said, when I got to school, um, and I really wasn't going to go to school, but my uncle talked me into going to school. Shout out to Blue Force University. Um, I went down there, and my roommate just happened to be a rapper. And he, we was talking, um, and he was like, man, damn, we dope, man. We had some stuff down here. I'm like, I got it. Yeah, I got some stuff at the crib. <laughs> so <laughs> we got some, we hustled our way back up to Columbus. So of course, neither one of us had a car. Brought it down there, and then when everybody you know, on the camera was like, hold on, there's a new kid who got stuff. I was about to say, I know your yeah. fucking pussy shit went through the roof. Yeah, it, was, it was always, my lesson was always. <laughs> I, I ain't knocking that. Right. I ain't knocking that. <laughs> I know some of the people came, the, the campus DJ, I know it was really like, you can't kick them off with a spoon, but, but, with a stick. But y'all know, man, look, the, being a DJ is the hardest part, man, of everything, because you're the first one there, last one, the last one, one to leave. So you get everybody there. Unless you're the nigga that put the money up. Yeah, you put the money in. So everybody knows, like, they'll be there, like, oh, they'll be all excited by the time you done packing up. They all go. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a wrap. But nah, but nah, it was. It took me to a whole nother way because everybody knew who I was. Like this little young dude came in and I'm I'm, you know, knocking off some of the kings of DJing and I really wasn't a DJ at that time. They're like, man, he beating y'all here and he really he said he really ain't a DJ, man. Y'all must really suck. So, <laughs> so I got a lot of enemies, but a lot of friends at the same time. So that, that goes with the thing you hear that too. Yeah. Rappers, DJs and shit. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You getting them DJ contests and you- yeah, man, yeah, I used to do that, and I was always, yeah, doing the tricks and everything else, I used to do like, all that stuff, wow. man, yeah.
But that's funny. You got your shit from the back of the stores. Yeah, back of the stores, man. I, uh, it was upstairs records or downstairs. I forget what it was, but it was like, man. I need that turntable. It was like one of the worst turntables I ever had. I remember in my we life. bought a. Uh, remember <laughs> we got the cough of the fiend came to the cough the cough and the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Oh, that shit. <laughs> Cop that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, and man. that was later though. My oldest brother, uh, Don Juan. Shout out to Don Juan. He was always like he really, even though we were growing into the music and, and fucking with it, he always kept feeding it to us and right. shit. And as shit evolved, he was. He had turntables early as hell. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I remember like when he had a summer job, that nigga bought the Dr. Uh, Sensonic drums. Remember them shit? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, that nigga bought Sensonic drums. Nice. All that shit. So, big shout out to Don Mario on his early shit. So, uh, who who style did you bite uh, when you started really being the serious rapping or about DJ? DJ. Really, honestly, nobody's. Um, did you did you buy anybody style when you was rhyming? When I was rhyming, shh, I was kind of not not biting, but inspired. Kind of, by no, nah, I ain't gonna say inspired. It was just like we were on the same plane, common sense. Yeah, it was like on the same thing, and I was a I was a battle rapper, man. I was the one that you know, like when we started off rapping, you know, if y'all know who copyright is and Kamu and everybody else, man. I was always the first one to start off. Yeah, yeah, so I was like the one. that I would go in and see somebody and I would, I would, you know, I'll be emceeing, but I would knock you off from your head to your feet. So I would start talking about your outfit, talking about your mom, doing all this other stuff off the top of my head. And then they would come in and, you know, and fetch it off. Like a whole fucking yeah. uh, production. <laughs> whole I don't production. Yeah, yeah. We, you know how we were talking. So we start <laughs> off, like, who's this goofy guy with the big ears and the Columbia jacket and stuff coming at me like this? Before they can get to me, they would come, and then I would be back in the groove shack trying to steal records. One, two, three, four. That was us, yeah. Word. So uh, that's what's up, bro. Because mm -hmm. history, the, the reason we, a lot of times, depend, like certain people we like to bring on here mm -hmm. to show Columbus's hip hop history. Yeah. In the show, some guy's been around. Though you look like a million bucks, nigga, you got you, you young as hell. Nah, so but it's like, I'm old. but it's like proud of these grades. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but the niggas three. have been paving the <laughs> way for this shit to be here today, and we want to show you love. That's why I appreciate it, man. Here, it was it was counted up. I was counting up the other day, man. Thirty three yeah. years, yeah. man. I've been doing this thirty three years. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, man, like, look. I don't know man. shit else but hip-hop. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? It saved my life. I tell everybody, hip-hop saved my life. I, it sounds cliche as hell, but if I, if I wasn't doing that, I'd have been doing something else. And I already know. I already know my mind. He'd have been the freeze crew. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? When you just was speaking about the mixer you had, right? Uh -huh. And remember, you went back down to a smaller mixer later, right? Yeah. The Lacey joint, right? Yep. Yeah, you already know. Then later, nowadays... That's the mixture motherfuckers using now. Like, exactly. All the same shit in it with the sounds and the and the clips and all that shit on it. Yes, sir. It's funny. Yeah, man. They saw it on Yeah, yeah. So, what was what was your favorite era of hip hop? It's got to be the golden era. It got to be our era, man. Where I was getting conscious. I was getting conscious stuff. At the same time, I was getting my hood stuff. I was getting, you know. You know, we was getting stuff from the south. We was seeing what Luke guru, was doing. The Guru era. Yeah, it like Guru Nas. Uh, it, it, it was like we was getting every, we was getting everything from De La Soul to yeah, to, to Paris to Big Mike to we was getting we was getting all these different things <coughs> and, 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 and everybody sounded different. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, wow, this guy's dope. He's dope because of this. Far side. Yeah, yeah far side. Yeah, yeah, far. Yeah, he's got every mob wallet in. Yeah, was a kind of Yeah, man. Brother Lynch, man. You know, we had, you know, then when, you know, like, when Dayton family came down this way, everybody went crazy. Then we had, you know, we had Mean Mug here. And we had, man, uh, Oh, Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse. Yeah, no, I know what I'm saying. No, I'm just saying. We had everybody in they, in they pods. And everybody respected everybody because what they was doing. You know what I mean? Like I said. We had Big Bro on here too. Oh, GT? Oh, 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 oh. Mario. Mario. Oh, my God. That's trying my to get guy. Back. They just opened up. They got a chicken spot. They just opened up here on uh, Driving Park and Livingston. Oh, they got the old uh, fish burger joint? Yeah, okay. old fish burger. No doubt. I yeah. can't say it. But they, they're going to do pretty good. I, before that, I was like, motherfuckers should open up the uh, diner back up because 
we used to call it the donut. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. But, uh, nah, like I was yeah. saying, like I said, when I come on the South, I, said, I told you I haven't been out here really on the South side since, you know, since we, y'all were pressing up my t shirts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I told you, and I, and I apologize for missing the last interview, man, the, 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 uh, you know, the. Miss Translation, no, yeah, yeah, good. man. But I have, I have found a T-shirt, what? like, like the summer and everything else, man. Like, y'all understand, man? This the the community that we have is just yeah. so vast. And what no, like I said, if you had beef with somebody, it actually was beef, and you wouldn't, yeah. you just wouldn't co mix, you wouldn't yeah, co mingle. Most part, and, and, and it wouldn't be but no. If it be a show, we have the same spot. It, it, it might, it might, it go, it might go down, but but it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be. <laughs> It's just like just like nowadays, it wouldn't be the, the top people. Yeah. It'd be everybody who's trying to make a statement. Yeah, I gotta make a statement. Yeah, do it over there. Like, nah, yeah. man, be like, cool. Nah, nigga, that, you can't, yeah, that's you how your crew, money up. That's how your crew gets smaller too. Cause yeah. you're like, man, you can't have these extra niggas trying to ride for the team. It might fuck up the whole bill. Yeah, they ain't got nothing to do with nothing, man. Like, yeah, you just the weed man, man. You just make me go get, <laughs> make me go get a sack. <laughs> So, right. but uh, two chance got everybody messed up with that now. Since he was the weed man, now he, uh, you know, where he at, where he is. So everybody, like, I can be the weed man to make it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you gotta be invested to make it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what gotta happen. You gotta invest in you. Mm-hmm. Paul, you better come up with doozies today. Yeah. Oh, another plane. I like that. That's cause DJ yeah. got me high. <laughs> er. Yes, sir. So I was, I do got here. I was going to ask you about having a uh, routine smash past that already. Yeah. Um, when I met you, uh, well, not met you when we re re. Uh, how would you say re connected? Basically, yeah, connected. And shit. Yeah. we were uh, used with chopping gang. Oh man, my my guys, boy. Ooh. Tell us, like, how how did your transition go from the megahertz to being down with Chopper Gang? Like, that? man, it's really, I was always, I hate to say, the visionary, but I am. It's a visionary. It's like a, it's a gift and a curse, man. Uh, I've always been able to go from the block to the boardroom, right. and and I and I just genuinely rock with good people. I don't care where you're from, what's going on, and everything else. With chopping game, um, you know Tone, SP, everybody. Shout out to Tone, yeah, Tone. Yeah. everybody over there. Yeah, man, everybody. Block, Mark, yeah, Mark, even Mike, everybody, man. Los, man, you know, man. Yeah, no. man, the dollar, man. God. So, like when I said we all became family by accident, it was really on some business stuff. I, I came up from school. There was only two street teams here. It was y'all? And it was us. Mm-hmm. And I came, and I came in, and, uh, and they were like, "Oh yeah, can you come up off off the flyers? Graphics, cool. All I wanted to do was graphics because I was, I don't know, I was um, street teaming for Atlantic Records, Def Jam, was doing all that stuff. So I didn't have time. Right. They was they was getting ready to open up the O, the obvious. We need help doing this, this, and this. They got a sound system in. Oh, we already got the DJ. Cool. I never wanted to DJ. <laughs> I didn't want to DJ. Like, I'm on some business shit. I don't want to DJ. Cool. The sound system came in. DJ, my husband, still my brother to this day, Cornbread, was supposed to be a DJ. He couldn't make it. Dom, can you touch up the sound system? Yeah, I got nothing to do today. I'm in town. Cool. So I went up there and I was DJing. Just fucking around. And uh, my homeboy was there. And he was talking to him. He said the whole time their eyes just got big. Because <laughs> we're taking it. At this time, I wasn't really DJing in the city. I was still out of Uber Fours, so just stayed doing all the touring right, and DJing. Right. So everybody, you know, prior to me going to school, they knew all right, I'm DJ. Cause we had the high school parties on there, this, that, and other. But you know, they coming from Youngstown and everything else, so they didn't know. They're like, oh, okay, we don't see everybody in the city. So I'm mixing, and they like. They, at the end, they like, hey, they had to look for the yeah, yeah, like the end of the, the, the little uh, while they was testing, they were like, hey, hey, Dommy, uh, can you just <laughs> uh, just start to start off for us? Because I'm like, yeah, y'all open the weekend. I got to be down a week before. We got a late day. Like, I'll start off. I'll leave at twelve. Old oh, dude can get on, and then after that, so I'm DJing. I get them there. Everybody just fever pitch. Ah! You know, it's the new club, Columbus, the obvious. Everybody top the game. Oh, everybody man, there. It was, uh, it was it was crazy. And I leave. Later on that night, I'm moving for us. 
I'm getting calls like at four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, yeah, man, how the club phone? It's cool, man. When we come back, we need to talk to you. All right, cool, man. Just give me a call. I'll be back on Monday. Nah, man, can you just give us a call tomorrow? This that another. <laughs> I heard call y'all in the morning. Yeah, I call y'all in. All right, cool. Let's get this call. Brad didn't do what he's supposed to do. No, he, he just he just wasn't. The, Brad was a DJ at um the skating rink up north, skate zone. North, uh, yeah, so he was more of a skating DJ and everything else. But he could rock, but he couldn't rock like I did. You know, I was I just had more years, and you know, I can read a crowd. That's the whole thing. My whole DJ stuff is about my routines. I read a crowd. Well, like you said, I can. Like, he I, reads the crowd. That was yeah. the question I was yeah, yeah. That same. Yeah. yeah, like like when I when I go through some of these things with the white folks, and that's my, that's my favorite time when I walk into the party. Be all white folks, and they see me, they be like, "Hey, you, I, are you <laughs> playing shit for the white folks? Do you play?" Uh, <laughs> white like folks. Uh, but sometimes they want to hear. Like this, this, uh, this funny. I just did uh, this this party. It's like uh, all these doctors and everything else, they 50, like all these cats. They was out in Dublin. And the the lady who booked me, I'm like, yeah, Dominic's gonna be perfect for it. And then they were like, oh, the guy from the radio, Dominic Style. And they don't even see that. Dominic Style's, yeah. They hear all that stuff. So they're like, oh, he's gonna be good. He can play the non music stuff. But when I walked in, they like, oh, their eyes get big. So they're like, oh my god, they're gonna play like you said he's gonna he was gonna play Pound Town and, and everything else. And so ain't nobody asking, ain't no white lady come up and ask you to play it or something like it. But but yeah, but but it, it came in there. So it, you know, I got flipped it in, so I went there and I, I went there, I played a few songs, they all got an ease and of course the alcohol kicked in and they're like, Oh my god, this guy's great. We never knew you could do all this other stuff. You're playing like I was playing like Pink Floyd, I was playing all types of stuff. And you know when we were younger yeah. It wasn't no BT, so we had we had MCB, yeah. so we had to hear ZZ Top and hear all the other stuff. And we like that. And, shit. And we like that. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm word for word, all that yeah, shit. All that yeah. stuff, yeah. Like, hey, rock and roll. Yeah, like we was in the football games, was welcome to the jungle, yeah. all the other stuff. So we today you can't name five rock and roll groups, but I know five of them from back then. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. So so when I'm hitting with all this other stuff, then one one of the guys on the part like, man, can you play some dirty R and B? I'm not going to do that. He made up his own way. He came out his shit. He played What do you mean, dirty R&B? What do you mean, dirty R&B? Yeah, dirty R&B. You know, like, uh, some Trey songs or some this, this, this. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, Trey songs got me through my bed, bro. Oh, yeah. I got a dope Trey song story, but we'll be here all night. But, uh, so... I'm like, dirty R&B. Then the lady's like, yeah, you look at dirty hip hop. Oh, and my, 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 other, my other old boy is like, dirty. We sit there like, huh, what do you mean? So do, do I, do I, so, 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 are they going to take so, the so, so, yeah. or do I play this shit? Yeah, yeah but, but at that point, you know, I've always been a person, I don't care, like, cool. So, so he went over there and talked to me, like, oh yeah, they, they wanted to hear some rap shit. Like, let's say some ratchet yeah, black shit. music. I don't care, it's, it's music. It is what it is. So then dirty was they quote unquote term. Safe word. Yeah, yeah, safe word for hood. For hood. Yeah. So, uh, the nigger shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah play what you listen to on your way here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you play on play what I was listening yeah, to yeah. on my way here. Yeah, yeah. When we heard Tommy Styles, yeah, we wanted to hear WAP. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, you know the WAP? Yeah, the WAP, you know the, the whip? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, we just, so yeah, those are like my favorite times where you just, you can go, you know, where, where you actually, diversity, they see things and you defy things, man, because that's, you know, that's the biggest thing. Well, that's well, they twerk money. It. Right, yeah. to get them to uh, see it from the light it came from, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I found out I was going to uh, Ugly Cooter Saloon. And it's, it's like 90% white in there, and everything they played was like rap. Right. And y'all know the words, and the fuck I don't. Didn't he right. DVD go up in Ugly Tuna do a, do her Ugly Tuna? Ugly Tuna was on campus, right? Ugly yeah, yeah, Tuna. Like in, in Short North or something. Mm -hmm. Honest, yeah, Bonner, yeah. Right around the uh, North Park. Right far from uh, Yeah, right. Not yeah, that far yeah, from yeah, we was. He went up in there did the Ugly Tuna Saloon. Yeah, that's good. Shout mind. out to the Ugly Tuna. They moved it, didn't they? Yeah, they, they got a few of them. It was a franchise now. And oh, I went to see. Um, I went to see um, 17th Floor there. Mm -hmm. You ever seen 17th yeah, Floor? Yeah, 17th Floor was the dope. The motherfuckers are bananas. Yeah, they're dope, super dope, yeah. I yeah. went to see them play there at the, at the Ugly Tune. Mm -hmm. Crazy. They still touring too, like 
mad book all year and shit. But yeah. they make it back around here around these months. Yeah, they also run the holidays, the yeah. holiday shows. Yeah. yeah. But yo, this is the Royal West Show podcast, and we about to pay a bill or two. We kicking it with Dami St- Huge. <laughs> oh, you should put fucking in the middle. Huge <laughs> fucking deal. Styles mm-hmm. and that boy over there, Paul Clark. That's it. That's it. And the Raw Show podcast is being brought to you by. I got a taste of some greens. I want something different. I mean, some chicken from off in his kitchen when they know ingredients miss and list. And I want a brisket. I like my cornbread this thick. Is it Pick up the phone, come get this. Come they got the biggest sandwiches. Ha ha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is that macaroni and cheese up? Is that macaroni and cheese up? Is that macaroni and cheese up? Yup, yup, yup. Our famous kitchen. Holler at us. We got you. 614 556 2174. Oh yeah! I thought you see. Yeah, I be thinking you was gonna do the yeah, clean over there, high motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he cleaning in his head like, it's, like, like it's time to do it. I it's time. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Hey, it's the wrong one anyway. <laughs> he said, he said, on the on the wine <laughs> shit. On the wine shit. He said, he said, he said. The Broadway Show podcast is also being brought to you by. Life should be relaxing, but it's not. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to create your own enjoyment. With many different creme velour flavors, such as very beautiful, exotic plum, mm. pomegranate mango, mm. and lemon haze. Yes. Relax, kick your feet up, and enjoy the taste. Creme velour, draped imperial grape. Mm. Creme velour, my lord! <laughs> <laughs> Stop. On the strip. Stay on the strip.